Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for today. We want to give you all the praise and all the glory. We want to thank you because of who you are, all that you're doing in our lives. We return all the praise and all the glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray as always that your Holy Spirit will continue to put in our inner parts the Word of God. And that He will continue to write upon our consciences. He will continue to write upon our hearts, upon our minds, the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. May we behold wondrous things out of your book. May we receive wisdom. May we receive understanding. May we receive revelation. May we receive illumination in your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, we're still continuing in our series of understanding, understanding the natural impulses. Amen. Now, we, are, we have been spending time on this teaching, on this series, because this is very key to everything. This is, very, this is key to the business of the soul. You... <laughs> You will not be, it's, it's not possible. You can't do the business of the soul. You can't do it without the word of God. You can't do it without dealing with the natural impulse. It's, in this case, the excesses, because that's where the problem is. The excesses of the natural impulse. And by the spirit of God, we've been able to narrow down. We've been able to narrow down exactly to where our problem is coming from hallelujah and that's all that we are doing trying to understand that problem uh, being empowered to take care of that problem and then we can move forward we can now begin to understand other things that god is saying to us hallelujah but if we if we don't take out this from the way Look at it in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Dear, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly, uh, fleshly loss, which war against your soul, which war against the soul. This is, this is Apostle Peter writing to the church. He said we should abstain from fleshly loss which war against the soul so you don't want to put yourself in a situation where the soul is constantly at, at war because if the soul is constantly at war in that sense you will not be able to do the business of the soul that's just it in other words your soul will not be able to grow and develop unto perfection. And that's not what we want. Because we, we've already seen and we already understand that we are here to perfect our resemblance of the divine. That is our mission. That's our primary mission, our primary objective. This is the reason why God has brought us into this world. And that is what we call the business of the soul. And you can't carry out that business of the soul without, first of all, dealing with these fleshy, uh, fleshly laws. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can't do, you can't do the business without, without dealing with that. So in 1 John 2, 16, 17, it says, For all that is in the world, we read that last week, the loss of the flesh and of the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the Word. And the Word passeth away, and the lost thereof. So the, the Word passeth away, and the lost thereof. 
but he that doeth the will of God abided forever. Amen. <laughs> he said, he that doeth the will of God abided forevermore. He that doeth the will of God will grow and develop unto perfection. Amen. So, last time around, we, we, when we talked on Sunday, um, we were able to group the, the, these things that plague man. We called, called it the twin virus or the twin viruses that, that plague the soul of man. The twin viruses that plague the soul of man. We, we identified it as lust and pride. Lust and pride. These are the twin viruses that afflict the soul of man, that war against the soul of man, that try to stop us from our objective of re, you know, perfecting our resemblance of the divine, to stop us from our objective of being perfected in Christ, from our objective of carrying on with the business of the soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this business of the soul is so interesting um, that you need to understand the, the fundamentals. When you understand the fundamentals, then you are now well positioned to take it, you know, uh, higher and uh, much higher. Amen. But until then, we need to lay the foundation so that the foundation is what we are laying. Praise the Lord. So these two, two twin viruses, I would want us to look at it in depth this morning um, with a view of um, being able to uh, understand how these things um, affect our member parts. Remember, we've been talking about our member parts. We'll be talking about the parts of us um, that try to dominate us. We, we've talked extensively on this. Um, we'll just be dropping one or two things you know, as we go a- ahead in this teaching. But we've talked extensively about these, these parts, these parts of us and how they try to, to dominate our lives. Hallelujah. So um, I'm going to try to show us um, again uh, how that these parts become empowered and how that um, we are commanded to rein in these parts. Hallelujah. They are parts of us, each and every one of us. You know, we have those parts. The Bible says the heart of man in Jeremiah 17 is desperately wicked, you know, and he said, who can know it? So you find out that in, in this heart of ours, there's so much evil, you know, that, that, is, that is going on in our hearts. So we need to reign in our hearts because that's where the problem is. Jesus said, it's not what enters a man that defiles him. It is what comes out from the heart. So out of the heart comes evil thoughts. Out of the heart comes thoughts of fornication, adultery, wickedness, murder, envy, theft, you know, all manner of vices. All these things are coming from the heart. These are your members. Amen. These are parts of you. They are parts of you. They are there. They are there. But, you know, what happens is that once some some of us, some of us, uh, these parts have become dominant in our lives. But for some of us, it has not gotten to, to that stage. We, we are still in control a, a little bit, but occasionally, or more, more, more often, we see these, these parts you know, coming in to take over our lives and, and run them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we we are going to we're going to look into the Word of God, and then we'll be able to understand how we can, you know, we see the effects of these uh, parts, and we you now begin to see how we can. <clears throat> we've been doing that. See how we can rein them in, because 
you know, those parts, those dominant parts are not truly representative of who you are. Amen. But you see, they are so dominant that they overshadow all your other parts. And so it looks as if that is who you are. But that's not who you are. Because that's why you, you've, you've come looking into the perfect law of liberty. In other words, you are looking to be liberated. You are looking to be freed from, from those dominant parts. Now, I want us to understand how these, these parts pan out. Now, you know, when we talk about, when we talk about these parts, I want us to understand clearly that all these parts are part, remember, remember, remember clearly that we are basically animals. Amen? We share the same physiochemical properties with animals. We are basically animals. Hallelujah. And in that, in that state of being an animal, we do not have, um, we are not subject to the laws of God. I, I want to always stress that. So we understand that when at that level of us functioning as animals, we lack what it takes, you know, to obey God in his word. That's why you find that, that a lot of us rebel against the word of God because we are operating in that animal form hallelujah and that that form always tries to take uh control of our lives because it is what we are used to it is what is natural to us now when i say control when i talk about these dominant parts trying to control our lives i want us to understand that as animals these are the natural impulses is natural with us now the manifestations of this part doing what they are doing is only is a natural habitat is what they are expected to do hallelujah let me put it this way when you study animals when you study animals you find out that animals they they have their own way of managing their lives. They, they manage their lives independent of God. They, they, don't, they, don't, they, are, they are not subject to the laws of God. So, you know, that's what the world call, calls animalistic uh, instincts. You know, so those, those instincts are run wild in them. So it's always a survival instinct, if you put it that way. So they, they're always trying to outwit each other. They're always trying to, in, in, in some cases, eat each other, devour and kill and eat each other. So, you know, these are tendencies that are in, in, you know, in, uh, in it, in, in animals. And we are animals. Human beings are animals. So you have to understand that. So when you, when those, when you talk about the parts, when you talk about um, uh, the, the ability to kill, yeah, which of course, if it is without any cause, that's, um, that's that becomes murder. But you know, in in self defense, you find that that if, if your life is threatened, you you can you can actually kill somebody in in uh, in self defense, and that would be okay. So you you see that you you have those those ability is is in you. Everything is in you. Uh, you see, if you look at the animal kingdom, they, 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 they take what does not belong to them. So greed is, is rampant within animals. They do a lot of stuff, you know. The survival of the fittest in, 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 the, in the oceans. Big fish, big fishes eat small ones. So, and it's, it's, it's normal, it's legal to do that. They, they are not subject to the laws of God. Okay, so, you know, so that is the same thing that that happens with animals too. And we are animals. And so you see a situation where the rich, you know, keeps getting richer and the poor keeps getting poorer. What is happening? The rich want to continue to take advantage of the poor. They, are, they keep swallowing them in, in that sense, you know, keeping them uh, at that 
poverty level. That's why even you know recently we've been talking about Black Lives Matter and all that. That's why you even talk about racism. You talk about slavery and all those things. Uh, so you, you it's in us. It's, it's natural with us to to want to dominate others. To want to make others our slaves, to to regard others as nothing, these are these are traits that are in us. They are animalistic traits. They are normal. Is you know without without God in our in our in our conscience in our consciousness, you know we wouldn't. Um, these are these are normal survival instincts. You know that people that animals animal animals showcase animals manifest. So we have those. We have those tendencies, is is in us, those natural impulses. They are there. Jesus outlined them, talked about wickedness, talked about adultery, talked about fornication, uh, he talked about um, covetousness, deceit, lasciviousness, uh, you know, all foolish, all manner of things. These are things that are rampant within the, the animal world, you know. You we, we, what we call it sexual immorality within their own with their, their own sphere and you know uh, world they don't they, they sleep with you know they sleep with themselves you know <laughs> it's it, it, uh, sexual immorality is not um, they don't they don't understand what is sexual immorality for them they they sleep. They, they sleep like animals that they are. They have it's nothing like um, love is just lost all over the place. Hallelujah. So that is that is what is natural with us. I, I want us to understand this thing so that you know when you see certain thing manifestations in you and you struggle with it, you need to understand where the struggle is coming from. That this is basically who you are. This is basically who you are. You are an animal. So, if you don't do anything to rein in those animalistic instincts, they will definitely eventually overthrow you. That's just the truth about it. So, understand that this is a burden we are, we are carrying. Do that, do that um, we... Uh, we have the spark of God in us, though we are animals basically, but we have the spark of God in us. That's what the, that spark of God in us has come to to help us, to move us from this, this base form and make us understand our higher form so that we can begin to relate with our higher form. We can become more of our higher form than of our base form. He said, a man who is in honor and knoweth not is like a beast that perished. So we don't want to be like beasts. We don't want to be like animals who have no uh, we have no re- we have no regard for the laws of God. We we are not subject to the laws of God, and therefore, like the Bible has designated, they are beasts that perish. We don't want to perish like animals, because we 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 have the spark of God in us, which we can aspire to to resemble, which we can aspire to be perfected uh, with that essence, that essence of God that is. That is, is in us. Hallelujah. So this is all what this teaching is all about. Basically, you need to understand that this is who you are. You are an animal. You are an animal. You have lots and lots and lots of animalistic tendencies. These are member parts that that are in you. And occasionally, they try to dominate your life. And that's why God has given us 613 commandments to reign in these animalistic tendencies that that are in us god recognizes that these tendencies are in us and so we have the capacity so when you're looking at your brother or your sister manifesting those those um uh, uh, parts you don't think that you are any better because those parts are in you but you they are just rain in and if you're not careful amen if you're not careful you will end up becoming like that that brother or that sister or that fellow. You are mocking. Because that's why when the Bible talks about the grace of God, you have to understand that you are not like that individual 
purely because of the grace of God. The understanding of the word of God that has come into your, into your mind and been expressed in your heart. So you become a different person altogether. You are, you've been able to rein in those animalistic tendencies. It doesn't mean that those tendencies are not in you. They are there. The scripture says with the mind we will serve the law of God. But with the, with the flesh, the flesh here is really talking about your heart. With the, the laws of sin. The laws of sin they are there. Sin is living. Sin that is living in your members according to Romans chapter 7. So, and Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. He said, for out of the mouth, you know, you know, comes evil, evil, evil thoughts, fornication, adultery, theft, wickedness, covetousness, and all manner of things. Evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. So, I want us to understand basically this is who we are. These, these tendencies are in us, but we need to Come to, we need to expose ourselves to the word of God so that we can reign in these tendencies. Now, let me explain something else again. Like I talked about animals and how they are able to, you know, these, these tendencies in them, you know, help them to survive in the wild. This called about the tendencies there, you know, they do whatever they do. They are animalistic tendencies, and that's like what what enables them to survive that survival instinct so to say in other words you have those parts of you manifesting not because not because you are a weakened fellow amen not because you are a weakened fellow you see those excesses in manifestation now understand that as life goes on and we develop and we get, get to understand some our those those parts are going to be reactive to there are so many things as we mature. Hallelujah. Now you see somebody become desperate. He wants to he wants to earn income. He wants to um, become independent. He wants to do stuff for himself. He wants to become responsible. So there are different paths that begin. So and in, in the process of doing that, you have some parts coming up and making suggestions and trying to take over and become dominant and say this is the way to do it this is the way we can do it so that there's that uh, um, part of you that is um that's, that's a thief that that says okay you know what we can we can steal we can we can make it we can make it in life by becoming becoming crooks we can make it in life by duping others we can make it in life by stealing from other people uh, we can steal with pain, we can steal with gun, we can steal. So is it is the part is a combination of so many parts, the, your greedy part and so many parts of you that are evil in them, they come together and they dominate your other parts. And you 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 find that that individual begins to go move on that trajectory. And there are some that Okay, in, in the in the coming and into being exposed to life and seeing what is happening and everything, there are others that will do different parts based on you know the, the parts that become eventually become dominant. The point I'm trying to make is that some parts become dominant in our lives because of um you know being able envi probably environmental factors, so many factors would have given rise to it. Hallelujah, because in some areas or parts of the world, you have uh, places where you are exposed to evil more than others. There are, there are conservative societies, there are, there are societies that are not conservative, you know, they are liberal, liberal societies. So you find out that somebody who is, who is developing in a liberal society would open up more to some dominant parts that, that, that would tend to be liberal. Then you find the situation somebody growing up in a conservative home will tend to open up to um, to a lifestyle or to to the part to dominant parts that are that are conservative, and then in 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 those settings where you have liberal and conservative settings, natural environments, and you know things that are factors that are happening in an environment, you will you will definitely definitely have some people who are eventually who will not do the line, who will not who will not do the norm, who will be who will oppose 
a conservative setting or a liberal setting, you you know you you, you depending on circumstances because because depending on what they are exposed to, the kind of teachings they are exposed to, what their parents are telling them, what they are hearing from their teachers, you know the kind of books they are reading, the friends they are associating with. So all these things will tend to begin to bring up some parts that you know maybe may have been dormant. dormant but because of association, they start coming up. They start receiving training. They start receiving understanding. And, you know, before you know what, it, it, what is happening, they start dominating that individual. So these are the things that make... Uh, make they are natural. They are, what I'm trying to tell us is that these are, these are natural tendencies. These are, these are things that are inborn in you. They are there to, you know, uh, help you. In other words, input, help, input. To survive in this life, there are survival instincts. Hallelujah! So, as the more you are exposed to the environment, the more those uh, parts are keep coming out and trying to, you know, manage your life. You know, um, they try to deal with stress. They try to deal with toxic environments. That's why you you hear some people they talk about haters. They talk about people. You know, uh, some some will tell you I have to become uh, class conscious. I have to uh, move and work with people who are, are adventurous, people who are ambitious in life. If I if I try to if I if I, if I have um, friends with people who are not ambitious, that might that might affect me. So I want to you know I choose my friends wisely. You know the people who I'm going to deal with. Some become class conscious. They they start they try to uh, you know isolate and deal with people who they believe that. Uh, that are their rich friends and the rest of them. So you see that happening in secondary school, primary school, all that, you know, and those those dominant parts are waking up, you know, and then some 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 people will say, no, I'm not gonna be in this category. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, and probably because of environmental factors, the the experiences that he or she is passing through, those dom some parts begin to wake up. Some parts will wake up and say, you know what? I'm not going to be in this in this place forever. I'm going to resist poverty with everything in me. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do this. I'm, you know, to make sure that I'm never going to be in this situation where people will ridicule me. I'm going to work hard and do this so that my children will never be in this situation where they uh, that I'm going through right now, where they're going to be ridiculed. So some some parts, you know, wake up. Some will not wake up. Some will, you know, go the extreme. You know, they go into toggery, they go into um, alcoholism, they go into drugs, you know, to deal with the emotions, to deal with the experiences that they are, they are going through and the, the, how the world is dealing with them. So you, these are the things that happen as you come up in life. Now, what the point I'm trying to make, the point I'm trying to make is that these things are natural to you. So you, you, you see somebody who is... Uh, a chain smoker, somebody who is um, a, 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 a into women, you know, and all that. These are ways and manners that you know uh, we we grew up trying to deal with these dominant parts that have taken over our lives because of one thing or the other experiences in the past. They take over our lives. They dominate us, and. Our response, our response to our environment is usually, you know, becoming, a, 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 having one form of addiction or the other to substance, to, you know, alcohol, to food, to women, to men, you know, all manner of things begin to happen. And this is as a result of the manifestation of these member parts. That are, that are trying to dominate your life as a result of the experiences. In other words, to, you know, what is happening and why it looks like you are, uh, you are not able to take control is because you yourself, you are without understanding. You don't know any better. So whatever that comes up from your environment, a suggestion of this is how to deal with this stress, this is how to move on in life, this is a, a better a way of thinking, a better way of doing things. So you're just going by the flow 
of your friends, your family, your relations, your environment, your world, your liberal world, your conservative world, your religion. Religion, religion is the biggest culprit in this in this matter. Hallelujah. Religion is the biggest culprit in this matter. Because many many people have been shaped by religious ideologies. Unfortunately, religion religion plays a greater percentage or uh, you know a, 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 a greater part of of the um the, the the rot, I'm telling you the truth, that, that takes place in the formation of human beings. Because when the foundations are not right, when when religion gets it wrong, when it becomes when it becomes a form of control, when it becomes a form of domination, you know, because when you have religious leaders who are not responsible, who think that the platform they have is a platform to to control, to abuse, to flex, you know, to make money, you know, uh, uh, from their from their flock. Okay, so you find out that what they will be feeding the the the, the, the their members will be like poison. In other words, they will they will be waking up some member parts that ought not to even um be known or seen. There are, there are some parts of all that that ought not to be seen or known. But, you know, because they, they are reined in, you will never know that they are there. But these uh, wrong teachings and understandings wake up these member parts to come out and begin to dominate also. That's why you see all manner of things happening, especially amongst people who claim that they are of faith. You know, you see all manner of all manner of strange, weird things. I mean, ridiculous. Somebody will go take his son, daughter, go and sacrifice to have money to become successful or famous, and then you wonder what is going on in the in the mind of this individual. And then you see all the kidnappings and all the things are terrible, terrible things that are happening, and then you wonder. Where do these people manufacture these things from? How does anybody in his right thinking stage begin to fact, fact all these things in his or her mind? How do these people function? Where do these thoughts come from? Where do these all these evil thoughts? I mean, it's terrible. If you look at what is happening in our world today, it is, it is out of control. And that's one of the reasons why we have this pandemic plaguing us. Because we have totally lost it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'm laying this foundation so that we can see exactly where the problem is coming from. And why sometimes these dom uh, dominant parts take over our lives. They're actually doing that in the guise of helping us to manage a situation. Helping us to manage um, uh, what seemingly seems to be like threatening our existence or... Or comfort here on earth so could people compromise sell their bodies just to be comfortable people people take bribe people do all manner of compromise their office they do all manner of things you know these are these are the things that push men into things you know they are doing all those things allowing those dominant parts to take over because they want to be comfortable they want to they want to escape poverty you know, there are, there are so many for them legal reasons, logical uh, good reasons why they should do what why why a, a lady should use her uh, sell her body in order to make money to feed her children and take care of her family and the rest of it. So there are so many justifications for somebody to want to be stealing and the rest of that. So I want us to understand that the reason why these things are prevalent is because these are normal. Survival is things that are happening in the lives of individuals. And these parts tend to manifest, they tend to showcase, trying to dominate in order to you know, push you above a particular uh, level or state or whatever. So you have all over the place people who are desperate. You give somebody money to do business with you, you will carry your money and run away. Why, why is that? Because 
is that dominant part that is that is you know is is trying to deceive the individual and and trying to guide the individual on how to survive yeah, and they say, say you know you have to stay you have to take somebody's money and take it and run to another country and establish yourself you know that kind of thing you can't make it if you if you try to be an honest person doing honest work and the rest of them so you know suddenly you see somebody who is who, is, who has always been a good fellow and then he turns into a monster i mean you've had cases of people who work in bank arranging for uh, armed robbers to come into the same bank to to rob their colleagues and even kill some of them just to to take money for what and you wonder this guy is working in a bank he's supposed to be content with whatever income he's earning so these are parts that be, they, they when they, they they give you cogent reasons why you should do stuff and you know they dominate you and you you you, you do you tend to become their slave because like i said Anytime a dominant past takes over your life, your, your thinking faculties shut down. So you become like a zombie and anything that that mind, that uh, member part is saying or, 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 or telling your body is what you, you start doing like a zombie. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think I've talked extensively on this. I needed to lay this foundation so that we can understand where we are coming from. Then when we are looking at the word of God, we can see how the word of God is helping us to address these things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So in James chapter 1 from verse 13, he says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. So from all these things we, we are talking about, you can see now that there is no, it's not, it has nothing to do with God. It's, it's just your natural impulse running wild. And in this case, you're not you're, uh, functioning as an animal. Your natural impulse is just trying to take uh, care of um, your situation or your circumstance. Are you getting what I'm saying? Probably you're out of money, you're out of funds, so the, those member parts try to dominate you, to push you to steal, to push you to dupe, to push you to do one thing or the other, so that you can come into a place of comfort. So it's like a, it's a, like a crisis manager, it's like they are doing things, they're trying to manage your life, they're trying to run your life, they're trying to help you out. But you see, that help is what is putting you into trouble. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that these are the things that are bringing up those member parts coming out, showcasing themselves and trying to run your life. This is the reason. Uh, these are the reasons why they are happening. So he said, you know, God is not saying in James chapter, he said, let no man say he is tempted. When he is tempted, I am tempted of God. So you see, this, uh, he has nothing to do with God. The temptation that is coming to you has nothing to do. God is not the one tempting you. Hallelujah. It's just your natural impulse that is running wild. Running wild in a way to help you. Now understand, and I, I, you know, understand what is going on. They are doing these things to help you. They are doing these things to manage your life. They are doing these things to position you. In their own, in their own understanding and your own understanding, in a better place and in a better way. So, you know, in your own eyes, they won't appear as evil because it's like survivor. You want to survive. You want to live a day longer, a second longer, a moment longer. So you tend to adjust your 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 whole being to go with this dominant past if you buy into their suggestion. Now, so you see clearly that God is not involved. He say God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. God does not tempt anybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see now clearly what I'm talking about. God does not tempt anybody. He doesn't tempt anybody. So understand the mechanism how your your body functions how your life works so that you can now be able to do what they need for to reign in this this impulses so god is not in voice not god tempting you it's not god pushing you whatever these are just natural impulses that try to guide your life that try to help you that try to manage your life that try to stabilize your life 
that try to protect you, you know, they do they do they do a whole lot of things in 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 many ways, in many ways. Like somebody who is who drinks, uh, who is into uh, uh, alcohol, drugs, and all that, you know, somebody ask them, they say, you know, I use it to calm myself. So they feel that when they are stressed, they need to take alcohol, they need to take um, drugs, cocaine, and the rest of them. You know, just to calm themselves and people who are chain smokers and the rest of them. So they have bought into those those uh, addictions, believing that these are the things that will protect them. These are the things that will help them manage life. These are the things that will help them pull through in life. So they buy into those addictions. So you see how easily people buy into addictions because they think they are helping themselves. I think that this, this is what I, you know, when I do it, it gives me, it, it calms my nerves. It, it gives me some form of, but, you know, when, when you now look at it, uh, uh, medically speaking, you know, the effects of those, those drugs, alcohol, and all, the, all these uh, vices, you find out that, you know, rather than helping you, they are destroying you. And I'm going to show you all these things from the Word of God. So it doesn't, it doesn't help you. In any way. So you see, first and foremost, we are clear now that God does not tempt any man. So he said, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Did you see that? His own lust, his own lust and enticed. So his own lust. So these things are coming from inside of you. They are, they, this protector pass, this manager pass, this crisis man, uh, management pass. You know, these parts that try to, you know, dominate you, that try to take your life. He said, he, he said when a man is drawn away by his loss. So, they, they, they are animalistic in themselves because they, they are not subject to God. They are not subject to God. So, the scriptures can call them lost. Because eventually, they, you know, they, we are not in living in an animal world. We are living in a sane world. So, you know, they will get you into trouble. When you steal, you, you enter into trouble. You know, you kill, you enter into trouble. You do the certain excesses you will you will get into that the arms of the Lord will take you up immediately. So when you cheat and you know you steal and the rest of them, these are things that get you into trouble. So they, they can't be helping you, but in your mind, because your mind is your thinking faculties are shut down, you can't see, you can't see through, you can't visualize, you can't understand. These things are not a way out, and they, that these things are not helping you. Hallelujah. So you see, as a man is drawn away in his own loss, these, these are all the things I'm talking about. The Bible calls them lost and enticed. Then when lost is had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Did you see that? And see, when, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. So the word of God to you and I is how we are able you know, I, I want you. I want you to under, also understand this thing. That's why he said, "This word of, of the Lord shall not depart out of, out of thy eyes, out of thy mouth, for thou shalt meditate therein." Now, I'm observing to do all that is written therein. Now, it is through the word of God that you now be able to identify these parts. There, are, there are lots and lots of them. So the only way it is possible for you and I to reign in this part is through the word of God because through the word of God comes the knowledge of sin. That's why God gave us his commandments. It is through the, the law that the knowledge of sin becomes something we also know about. There's no way we would have known that these things, that these are our emotions, that these are our member parts are trying to destroy us. We won't know. We, co we willingly cooperate with them because we are, in, we are in the dark. Okay? So, but through the word of God, through the exposure from the word of God, we now have information to understand that these member parts are out to destroy us. They are not... They're not doing anything helpful or good. Or they're not protecting us. They're not really managing our lives. Okay? You, 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 the only way you get to know that is through the word of God. That, that's, that's what the Bible means when it says that through the law comes the knowledge of sin. That's the reason why God gave us the law. He gave us the law so that we will be aware of what is sin. Okay? And being aware of what is sin... 
we can now go back to him to receive strength in order to live above sin, in order to, in, in, when you say live above sin, in order to rein in those member parts. We, on our own, trying to do it on our own, we will not be able to do it. We may, we may never be able to rein in those parts on our own. We can't do it. It is through the knowledge that comes from the Word of God and us cooperating with the Spirit of God that we will not be able to reign in these parts. Hallelujah. You see, that's why he said, when we now give in to this sin, when we now give in to these impulses, when we now submit ourselves to these dominant parts to manage our lives, you know, to help us, they are helping us. <laughs> okay? But because that help is destructive, and we know better from the word of God, so we can't categorize it as help. And they do not have the capacity to be able to really help us because the animal in the in the animal world is okay. In the animal existence, it's okay. It's okay to do whatever. Nobody is you're not under any law regulation or whatever. It's okay to do that under the animals, the real animal system. But under our system, because of the essence of God in us, it's not okay. To, to allow those dominant parts to run our lives because they will put us into problem. They will, they will take us into destruction. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to quickly to Romans chapter, uh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, begin to read from verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that our, all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And we are all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was, was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Did you see that? Did you see this member pass? Did you see what this member pass did to these people? They drank from the rock. They drank from Christ. So you, you say you are a believer. You are drinking from the rock. Okay? But if you don't, if you don't rein in these member parts, if you don't rein them in, huh, you are exposing yourself to being overthrown in this life. You know, it's dangerous. In other words, you, you are doing the part that may cost you your salvation. Hallelujah. So he says something here. He said, uh, but now, now these things were our examples. Amen. Do you see that? To the intent that we should not lost after we should not lost after evil things as they also lost it. Remember, I told us that. The two things that 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 threaten our uh, existence, that that threaten our biz, uh, our being able to do the business of the soul, are uh, lost and pride. Okay, so you see, in this case, he said to the intent that we should not lose. So God is saying these things, these are examples we are written, we are being shown these examples, so that. We will not lost after these evil things. We will not open up ourselves to these member parts that are seeking to help us, that are seeking to fight our battles, that are seeking to protect us. In other words, these animalistic uh, tendencies that tend to, you know, run our lives, that tend to all in the name of helping us. The Bible says we should not lost after the same things because the Bible categorizes it as as loss. In other words, excesses. Of that uh, natural impulse. Need that be ye idolaters, as we are some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat uh, and rose up early to play. Did you see that? Need that let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, because in these people, they, they are member parts, their sexual parts, they allow them to dominate and into all manner of perversions, and that led to. Um, one thousand one uh, that led to three and twenty thousand falling in one day. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. You know, know the story. 
neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer now this all these things happened unto them for examples and they were written for our admi admonition admonition upon upon whom the ends of the world are come wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall did you see that let him that thinks that he is standing take heed lest he falls so you see pride 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 is one of the main reasons why you know uh, some some of us are going to shortchange our our business of the soul um, it's a virus that's that's the that's the message you know uh, the message i'm trying to bring to us is a virus that afflicts the soul pride is a virus lost these are the two key things that are afflicted the, the two key viruses that afflict the soul that, that that is like a plague on the soul your ego you know uh, trying to you know so most times you find out that your member parts what they do is that they are trying all the time to massage your ego some people will say boost your ego confidence or whatever you know but you know these are these are things that should change you these are things that should change you hallelujah the scripture says something he said what do you have that you did not receive he said where is the place of boasting why why should it why should you at any time feel that there is need for you to boast about anything you see when we get into trouble we don't know why how and when we set up ourselves to get into trouble he said why are you boasting is there anything that you have that you did not receive he said where is the place of boasting why are you boasting why are you showing off what is the reason for the showing off. Why are you making noise? What are you trying to say? Some say, oh, I'm doing it all to the glory of God. Forget it. You're trying to boost your ego. You're trying to massage your pride. You're trying to tell the world that you are somebody. And God says, what did you receive? What do you have that you did not receive? Where is the place of show? Where is the place of pride? What are you boasting about? You see, that boasting can only be coming from your member parts that is canal. Can't be from God. So these are the things, and you know, when you when you are in that state, your 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 all the member parts try to follow that same pattern. You see that you, they are running after loss or they are running after pride. They are trying to massage your ego. They are trying to protect you. They are trying to you know, do you know who I am? You know, they're trying to show you that you are somebody. And then those member parts take advantage of that. They push you into all manner of excesses because you are trying to prove yourself. You're trying to show that you belong. You're, you're trying to show that you have arrived, you know. And so what you, you, you're trying to live above your means. And living above your means means that you're going to be stealing. You're not going to be compromising. If you're a woman, you're going to be sleeping around. You're going to be doing all manner of dirty things in order to, to be able to measure up, you know. Is it that you are wearing designers, you know. You see people, they talk about designers, designer bag, designer shoe, and stuff like that. And they make noise about it. They show it off. And, you know, some, some other person will say, you know what, you know, you're not better than me. I can, I can show you that I can do it better. And then in the process of trying to push yourself to be like that other person who is out there showing off and all that, you now start getting yourself involved in messy, messy things. You start compromising. You start selling yourself. You start taking bribes. You start, you start cheating. You start duping. You start doing all manner of things in order to measure up. So your member, those evil parts of yours, you know, greed, um, covetousness, all manner of, you know, uh, evil thoughts and the rest of them, wickedness, all those things start coming out to dominate your life because you are desperate, you want to be, you want to be better than A, you want to be better than C, you want to compete, you know, the Bible says they that compete amongst themselves, he said they are not wise, they are not wise, he said having food and raiment, be content, so contentment flies 
out from the window because you have opened up yourself to the virus called pride. You've opened up yourself to the virus called pride. So this is what the scriptures is warning us about. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 6. Paul was after that Paul went into the third heaven according to the scriptures. He went into paradise. Look at verse verse 6. He said, For though I would desire to glory, somebody who had gone into paradise and had things that were unlawful to be uttered to men. You know, he said, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth in me to be, or that he heareth of me, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Amen. Did you see that? Somebody who went into... Now, now I want you to see something. I want you to understand something clearly in this place. This is a man. He's not, he wasn't in pursuit of the world, things of the world, or earthly things. I'm talking about spiritual matters. Talking about everything spiritual. Now, he went into the third heaven, into paradise. And the scripture says, when he was there, he said he doesn't know whether it is in the body or out of the body, but whilst he was there, he had things that were unlawful to utter to man. Spiritual matter. But yet, the enemy was going to take advantage of it. That member part, called pride, was going to rise up. And mess things up for Apostle Paul. And Paul, and God who knew Paul better than Paul knows himself. Knew very well that if he doesn't contain this pride, if he doesn't contain this pride, this pride will destroy Apostle Paul. And so Paul recognized that lest I should be exalted above measure, to think of himself more than he is. He said, because of the abundance of revelations that was given to him, he said, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet him. God marshaled, not the devil, oh. <laughs> God himself marshaled the messenger of Satan to go and buffet Paul. What is the reason for the buffeting? To deal with pride. To deal with this virus called pride. Not the, this, in this case now, Paul is not, Paul is not suffering from the virus. He's been able to manage the virus of uh, lust. He's been able to manage the virus of lust. But in this particular case now, because that's how that's how, how come he was even able to be taken into the third, third heaven. He's been able to manage the virus of lust. But there, there still remains this virus called pride. And God needed, needed that uh, pride to be dealt with. And dealt with it in a manner that, you know, Paul didn't even have much say about it. God himself took charge of the situation. To deal with pride in Apostle Paul. Maybe Paul didn't even know that, that it was a serious matter to that extent. Hallelujah. He said, For this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, No, I'm not going to take it away. I've already given you grace so that whatever buffeting that goes on in your life, you know, you'll be able to deal with it. Because that pride needs to be dealt with, that pride needs to be removed. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, for my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity. You see what has happened? So Paul, instead of now boasting about the abundance of revelations and how he's a great man of God and how nobody compares to him, he has now been humble to realize that he is not different from any person. He's just like every other person. The only thing that has changed in his life is the grace of God. Oh, that does not look like your gods of men. Hallelujah. It does not look like them. Oh, your gods of men that must, that must be 
uh, that must be flown in private jets that you that you you pay for. The gods of men that that enjoy luxuries, luxury treats that you you pay for. You don't pay for it; they'll find a way to flick it out from you. That does not look like them. This, this, this is not them. This is Paul. Is different. Hallelujah. Paul said, "I'm not different from you. It is the grace of God." How did he got, get to that place? It is by the special mercy of God who decided to intervene to make sure that Paul does not boast, begin to boast about the abundance of revelation. And for him to understand that, that that only happened as a consequence of the mercy of God. And that does not make him better than anybody. He said, what do you have that you did not receive? Where is the boasting? Why, why should he even be boasting about it? There's, there's no reason to be what you, what you, you call yourself uh, gods of men. What are, who are you? The only thing different about you is the gift of God. Is it your own? No. You received it. So why are you making noise? As if you manufactured it. It's not yours. It's the gift of God. So you should be humble about it. What's all this rubbish that is going on? I hope that coronavirus has dealt with that. I hope that our brains have been opened up to understand that all these men these gods of men that we worship, it ought not to be so. We ought not to do these things. The only person we need to worship is our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that we're supposed to worship. Amen. Hallelujah. And not any man. But, but that does not mean that we don't have respect for the gifts of in the body or the gifts that God has given to men. No. We respect our elders. We show respect to them. But for no reason should we worship them. And and they are not infallible. They are humans and they make mistakes. So we have to also see that see them in that light. Be able to support them prayerfully. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Paul says, says here, uh, most gladly, therefore, now he has learned his lesson. Will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me? Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Now, what is God trying to tell us? He said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, but the Lord God shall deliver him out of them all. Now, I want us to understand that God also allows us to pass through afflictions because he wants to deal with so many issues in our lives. He wants to deal with these member parts. He wants to deal with them. He wants to, he said, he said my, do not grieve, you know. He said, only, he said, God disciplines his own. He said, except you're a bastard. He said, no, no discipline at any time. According to Romans, I think it's Roman, uh, Hebrews chapter 12. No discipline at any time is pleasant. But it's to work out the peaceable fruits of righteousness in us. So God puts us through the paces in order to perfect us, in order to take out these laws these viruses of loss and, and, and pride in us. So you understand that this is, these are one of the ways that um, these viruses can be dealt with, apart from the study of the Word of God, apart from prayer, apart from meditation in the Word, apart from the performance of the Word. One of the key things that interventions that God does in our lives is to allow us to pass through afflictions and tribulations and stuff. These are things that are, are, are designed you know, to deal with loss and to deal with pride in us. Hallelujah. So when we, when we go through stuff, let's allow, you know, it's a less, it's a, it, 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 can't, it, it's a can't it all joy when we pass through these things, you know. It's a let patients have a perfect work so that we'll be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity to share your word. We pray, Father, that you continue to expound on the truth, uh, expound the truth for us so that we may become better and better. We may actually begin to pursue this business of, of the soul towards being developing and being perfected in Christ in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.